And then we have like the um, final scene where he's they've basically like isolated himself from the rest of the football players, or the rest of the football players are like agreed to do the number reluctantly so that they can play in the game and win like the national conference. But Dave Krosky's like so upset about being called gay and whatnot that he actually just sort of stands in the stands watching it and um it's not until he sees like the actual crowd like rooting for like the football team doing their like thriller dance and their like makeup and whatnot that he actually starts to join in and there's obviously that scene where he's running he's running from the stands he's running onto the pitch like <laughs> completely dressed in like his street clothes and then just like puts on like a little football jersey you know as they do in Glee they always have everything to hand for some reason and then they just like he just like walks onto the walks onto the field and then starts dancing with the rest of them and then of course there's like the happy ending as Glee when like well, Glee <laughs> then there's like the happy ending where um, basically the football team actually win the national conference and obviously we get to see a lot of smiling Dave which we've never really seen before you know he's always pretty miserable looking <laughs> if we're being quite honest but um, but yeah and that was that was one of the big things as well for me is just seeing him smile I just and you know because obviously he's been through such like a struggle and he just he doesn't really know who he is at the time and he you know he he has this like idea that he wants to be like the big masculine jock you know who dates girls and get married one day and have kids and whatnot and then there's like the actual side of him where he's gay and you know he doesn't want anyone to know that because he fears like he's gonna get like slushied in the face every day and you know people will like bully him people might be physically violent to him and he's just basically like a scared 17 year old boy I think we can all relate to that. Um, not necessarily, you don't necessarily have to be gay to relate to fear of all those things, but you know, it's a scary place sometimes. You know, especially when in his situation where he doesn't have anyone to talk to. You know, he doesn't have a glee club. He doesn't have a Bert Hummel as a father. I mean, we see Paul Karofsky as father in a few episodes, and he seems like an alright, decent guy, but obviously that something's gone wrong in their relationship where Dave doesn't necessarily feel like he can talk to Paul. But anyway, we were after that we were convinced that there's, you know, Dave was gonna be like a big part of Glee now and he was gonna start singing, he's gonna join New Directions, um he was just gonna be like a bigger character than what he was. And then obviously <laughs> to our horror, he didn't actually appear for like the next five episodes. I remember we were just like tearing our hair out that's not like some of the standards of the episodes, like Episode 13, Comeback, which was, like, widely renowned in the fandom as, like, the worst episode that Glee's ever done. And uh, <laughs> um, I don't think it's a harsh assessment either. I think, you know, the episode had no real storyline development, and it was all just about doing, like, Justin Bieber numbers and whatnot. And, you know, there should have been some Dave Karofsky in that episode. They could have given him some real character development. Because when he did come back in, like, episode 17, it was kind of... Like, oh, here's Dave, like, you know, like, uh, here's Dave, and he's just, like, throwing a slushy in people's face again, it's just, it's, like, so frustrating, seriously, just, <clears throat> and basically that whole episode just left us feeling, like, really flat, I think, because, you know, they had that, that confrontation scene as well, where he's like, oh, yeah, I've just come from the gym, I was just pumping my guns, and we're just like, you give it up, Dave, we know where you were. <laughs> And anyway, they have like that horrible um, shoving war with Blaine, and then basically Karofsky's made to look like the bad guy as always, and he sort of scuttles off, um, only to be seen again the next episode, just, like staring at Sam's ass as well, which was, you know, it's it in a way it was a funny scene, but in a way it's kind of like once again, oh, gay men, you know, lecherous pose, blah blah blah. Um, but then obviously, as the episode born this way, like progressed. Obviously, we began to see more of that sort of the side of day that we knew was there, but we weren't really seeing. And we thought, oh, you know, if we could grab a hold of this and we can get like this Dave, and this is like the positive role model that like all these kids, you know, who are tweeting Max Adler on Twitter saying, oh, you've inspired me to come out, you've inspired me to not commit suicide or not do something like really bad um, as a result of being gay, then, you know, this is the, this is the Dave Karofsky that we want on our screens. And obviously, um, we begin to see like his vulnerability in that episode actually as well. Like, obviously, once Santana figures out his sexuality and like basically makes a stand to him, like in the coffee house, which is saying, "I know you're gay," and he's like, "Well, why are you doing this to me? Why are you, you know, ruining my life?" 
And she's like, well, I'm not trying to ruin your life. I'm trying to help you out. And I think, you know, that's like a perspective that people hadn't really looked at before, you know. It's like I said before, Dave doesn't have anyone to talk to. Um, and that can be quite an isolating place. And you can just see, like, the re look of relief on his face as well when Santana tells him that she's a lesbian. You know, it's almost like he's found someone else who's in the same boat, you know, someone who is gay, isn't happy about it, you know, doesn't want to be gay, um, and is struggling to come out and be themselves. And I think that's a relief for him as well. It's just, you know, to be not alone anymore in this, like, situation. And then obviously at the end there's a scene where um, he's watching New Directions perform, he's watching Kurt perform, um, and you can just see, like, the look on his face is like, oh, I want to be up there. I want to be doing it, I want to be like Kurt, I want to be open, like be who I am. Um, but obviously at the same time there's like that look on his face as if to say, oh it's never going to happen, I'm never going to be able to be like that because of who I am. You know, and obviously there was that scene as well where um, it's sort of like the United Nations of Glee, it was like Figgins, Will, Kurt, Burt, Paul and Dave Karofsky were all in the principal's office and they're all <laughs> um, basically like trying to build bridges between um, Dave and Kirk's so obviously what's going on between them um, and it's just like such a powerful scene as well because I think for the first time we actually see that Dave is really sorry for what he's done and I think we see Kurt accept that and it's like you know that weight was lifted as well because obviously a lot of us want to see like that sort of build them friendship between Kurt and Dave as well as obviously then seeing the future romance you know which obviously a lot of people are objective to which, you know, people have their reasons, you know, people prefer Kurt and Blaine, people prefer Kurt and Sam, whatever, you know, we prefer to see Kurt and Dave. Um, so obviously it was a powerful scene for us as well, it's like, you know, that love knows no boundaries as well, it's like, um, love can overcome all obstacles, and just because, you know, someone has been awful to you, doesn't mean that they're not sorry about it, and they wouldn't do everything that they can to try and make amends for it. Um, which obviously then we see in episode 20, which is Prom Queen. Um, and this was an interesting episode for us, actually, because there was a girl on Twitter, her name was Nicole Crowther, and um, she released some spoilers, basically saying that um, Kurt and Dave are going to be like Prom King and Queen. And obviously the fandom exploded with rage, you know, rawr, rawr, it should be Kurt and Blaine, who should, should be Prom Kings and whatnot. And we thought, well, actually, no. You know, we've had nothing here, so I mean, this is like <laughs> this is like the writers throwing us a bone. So, but obviously, we spent the time speculating what's going to happen. Oh, is Dave going to come out? Or is he going to be outed by someone? Is something bad going to happen? Um, and then when we actually saw the episode, we we're actually quite surprised. You know, we got this great apology scene. We actually saw, you know, the outpouring of emotion. We actually got to saw like we actually got to see Dave's like um, vulnerable side again where he's like apologizing to Kurt and he's like I'm so freaking sorry and then we're like oh <laughs> and then anyway we get to see like this like we get to see like the great side of um, Dave and he's basically protecting Kurt from now on like walking in between lessons doing like this wearing like this stupid like Girl Scout outfit like that's like a cross between like the Girl Scouts and the Black Panthers or something stupid um, like this little beret as well which you know we don't we we hadn't we hadn't had many like comedy scenes with Dave, you know since his storyline really began, and it was just nice to actually see like that kind of funny like Dave that we we all kind of like kind of liked but we didn't like <laughs> in the beginning if you know what I mean, um, and I think anyway it, the end scene it just kind of reminded me of how far he's come in his storyline but um, how again. The real life situation just drags people down. Obviously, he has that chance to come out when um, Kurt's announced prom queen, and they have to dance together. And you think, is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? And then no, he doesn't do it because obviously not because he's Dave. <laughs> um, and but obviously the um, the prom ends kind of badly because he runs out, and then Santana runs out, and Quinn runs out, and people run after them. No one runs after Dave because he's got like no friends because he's like, isolated himself. You know, no one knows the real him anyway. Um, I just thought that's really sad as well because I can relate to that as well because when I was in school um, I was kind of like the guy who had like no friends because I was always trying to be something else that I wasn't and then I think people could tell that as well um, so I never came across as like the genuine me and um, obviously he's doing the same thing so 
obviously no one runs our gym because no one cares. <laughs> I think I just relate to like his storyline so much because you know the way he goes to like extreme lengths as well to try and hide who he is like I went through that as well Um, you know I, I was never the bully I never did like any of the some of the things that he did but you know there was that case of well maybe if like I meet the right girl or whatnot, then I can maybe like kiss the gay out of myself or you know maybe something will click and it will just all disappear and everything will be alright but um, the only thing that I realized the more I did stuff like that was that you know I'm gay and it's here to stay and it's not gonna go away and I think as well with a character like Dave Karofsky it kind of shows you that it's not just like the stereotypes who can be gay it can be like anyone it can be you know the big dumb jock who like bullies people it can be like the little nerdy guy who sits in the corner no one talks to you know it can be like you know class president or something you know anyone could be gay and it's just it's not a case of choosing you know and it's not a case of being gay defining you by characteristics like you know, not all gay people are camp, and not all people are all gay people are effeminate, um, and not all gay people dress in Lady Gaga outfits. But um, it just goes to show you that anyone can be gay, and I think that's one of the great things about like Max Adler, particularly in this role, is that he gives you that vibe of like the everyday kind of guy, like the guy who could live next door to you. Um, and I think maybe like some people who maybe don't understand these things. Maybe they can see this, the Dave Karofsky storyline and as well as Santana's storyline and they can see, you know, that gay people are not all like they thought they were. You know, gay people are just real people that like could be a member of their family and then, you know, and perhaps um, with this kind of breakthrough we might see more acceptance and tolerance of gay people, you know. People realise, you know, that being gay is not a bad thing, you know. Every, anyone in their family could be gay and that they shouldn't treat them any differently because they're still the same person who they were inside before you know you're just seeing a new side of them but perhaps you didn't know was there before you know we all have hidden hidden talents and hidden depths so no one knows everything about us even our own families but um one of the things i'm particularly moved by as well is actually as i think i touched on it already but some of the tweets that max adler retweets um you know storylines of people saying oh you know i was I was really struggling with myself. I didn't know who to turn to. I didn't have anyone to talk to, you know. And then seeing seeing your storyline basically inspired me to make the make the step myself and approach people who perhaps I didn't know would be accepting and and they have accepted me for who I am. And then everything's you know all right in the end, which is you know the important message of the storyline, which is that. You know, it gets better as as um, Max Adler made his own video for the um, the It Gets Better project, and I think also that video in particular, as well as his appearance on Doctor Phil, kind of showed you that you know Max Adler is like a really kind of like little gentle teddy bear kind of guy. He's like really mellow. He's like really relaxed. He's like really good mannered, really soft spoken. And then there's this other side of him when he plays the character on Glee, and he's like either like this vulnerable boy who's trying to hide who he is or he's like this really aggressive like jock who's like trying to well hide what who he is like by any means necessary even if it means getting aggressive or violent and I was just you know I obviously none of us really knew who Max Adler was before Glee um and this has kind of like opened our eyes to like this wonderful man wonderful great human being you know obviously we see some of the causes he supports like the MDA um it gets better the Trevor Project, all these things, like he's obviously he's trying to make a difference, like in people's lives. He wants to try and help people out through his acting, you know, perhaps perhaps playing roles that haven't existed in the past and that people can relate to, you know. I know, you know, when I was growing up. I